Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Today is Malcolm X Day, May 19th. If Malcolm X lived, he would have been 91 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And I just want to take some time to reflect on this great black man's life. Of all the people that I've studied, Malcolm X is by far one of the most influential. A few days ago, I did a presentation about Malcolm X, and I'm going to touch on some of the things that I presented in that presentation. When I went to school many years ago at Howard University, I was really inspired by Malcolm X's example. I saw a documentary entitled El Haj Malik El Shabazz about Malcolm X's life. It was a short documentary. It was about an hour long. And that documentary is actually here on YouTube. And if you haven't seen it, I recommend that you watch it. I will include a link to that documentary in the description box. But when I saw that documentary, it opened a whole new world to me. It opened an entirely new perspective. And it inspired me to actually go and read Malcolm X's autobiography. And that book, the autobiography of Malcolm X, is probably by far one of the most influential books that I've ever read in my life. Malcolm X is an example. He's an example on so many levels. He's the example of triumph over adversity. He's an example of a man completely transforming his life. One of the most poignant or powerful moments in that book is when Malcolm X talks about his encounter with one of his teachers when he was in the sixth or seventh grade. He was one of the top students in his class. He was the only black student in his class and people called him nigger repeatedly. You know, his classmates, the teachers, everybody. At one point, you know, he sat down with one of his teachers and his teacher asked him what he wanted to be when he grows up. And Malcolm X, he really didn't know what he wanted to be, but he just thought about it for a second. He said that he wanted to be a lawyer. And this teacher told him that he needs to be realistic about being a nigger and that that's no occupation for a black kid or a Negro at that time. And he didn't even use that those words. This teacher actually called him a nigger. But this was commonplace back then. So that young brother's dreams were crushed. Crushed completely. And his spirit was deflated. And when I think about that moment, you know, when I think of how I'm a lawyer today, I'm an African-American man, and I'm actually realizing a dream of being a lawyer. I always think I want to be the kind of lawyer that Malcolm X would have been if he was able to practice law, if he was able to fill out, fulfill his dream of being a lawyer. So he's my inspiration in that respect. So as you all know, Malcolm X life took a turn for the worse. His family was split apart torn apart by the, the system and his parents, his brothers and sisters were sent to different places. Um, and eventually the brother ended up leading a life of crime. He ended up selling drugs, using drugs. He ended up pimping. He ended up being a, um, a numbers hustler. The brother was doing all kinds of things to survive. And he was eventually uh, arrested and incarcerated for burglary. And while he was in jail, he received a letter from his one of his brothers. One of his brothers, Reginald, became a member of the Nation of Islam. And he told this brother, Malcolm, that he has a way for him to get out of jail. And that was the beginning of his journey towards enlightenment, his journey towards the Nation of Islam. And as we know, that once Malcolm X left jail, 
and actually before he left jail, he was self-taught. You know, the brother began to expand his vocabulary by reading the entire dictionary. He studied relentlessly while he was locked up, read all kinds of books about philosophy, history, and all kinds of things. He got a better education in jail than many people get in the best universities. This brother became very enlightened. He went on to be become one of the greatest leaders in our history. He was fundamental in the building of the organization called the Nation of Islam. He built that organization. He expanded the organization. And this brother's contribution to the movement is fundamental. He was one of the modern day black nationalists. He was taught by Elijah Muhammad, the doctrines of the nation of Islam, but later on in life, he would go beyond the nation. He would leave the nation and start his own organization, the Organization for Afro-American Unity, an organization that was all about building bridges and organizing black people not only just in America, but linking up with our brothers and sisters around the world for a united front so that we as a people could have justice, freedom, and equality worldwide. So the brother was a modern thinker in terms of promoting the idea of black nationalism. He opened my eyes because before that, all I was taught in grade school was about the civil rights activists. We always hear about Martin Luther King and nonviolence and integration and those things. But growing up, I didn't hear about Malcolm X. I didn't hear about his positions. It was a completely new perspective that was opened up. Things that should just be basic common sense became some kind of beacon of light. It should be common sense that black people, like any other human beings, have the right to defend themselves. When Malcolm X saw the brutality that our children, our women, and our men faced simply marching for rights to be treated as equal human beings in this country, when he saw them facing that kind of brutality in the face of their nonviolent righteous conduct, the brother said we have a right to defend ourselves just like any other nation or any other group of people. He said we had a right to freedom, justice, and equality. And we are entitled to use any means necessary. So that brother represented a strong black man a strong black man that had the courage to stand up in the face of injustice. The brother espoused nationalism, as I said before. A simple idea that instead of begging white people for acceptance, instead of begging the white man for a seat at his table, instead of begging the white man to, to let them eat in, his, in the white man's restaurants, instead of doing all those things, the brother Malcolm said, we need to own and control the businesses in our community. Instead of begging the white man to accept us in his schools, instead of turning our children's minds over to our very enemy, the brother Malcolm said, we need to build our own. We need to build and establish our own schools. And the sad thing is, all these years later, everything the brother said is still relevant. We need to build our own institutions. He said we need to own the, the economic institutions in our community. We need to control the politicians in our community. Those are the things that we need to have control over. 
if you look in any urban area, any predominantly black community, most of those communities are owned by other people. Most of the businesses are owned by foreign people, people who do not live in the community, people who are not invested in the community, people who couldn't care less about the community. Those are the people that own most of the businesses in these black communities. The brother talked about politics. He talked about having an independent frame of mind not being committed to one party or the other, having a policy of non-alignment. He talked about the power of the vote, the potential power of the vote. The brother also had a, a Pan-Africanist perspective that saw the connections between African people worldwide and the common struggle between, you know, among African people worldwide. The struggle against racism, the struggle against imperialism, the struggle against colonialism and neo-colonialism. The brother also was a major influence in my life in terms of religion. A major influence. When I was in college, you know, I wouldn't say that I was an atheist. I wasn't an atheist. I was more of a agnostic. You know, I didn't really um, cling to any um, faith or anything like that, any particular religion. But the first time I heard about the Nation of Islam, you know, there was this young brother at college. You know, we would spend time in debates. You know, we would gather in our dorms and just um, argue and debate about religion. And the brother just opened up a different perspective. You know, the nation of Islam theology. And that theology made me want to study religious texts that I had no interest in studying before. But needless to say, I never embraced the nation of Islam's theology you know, I had questions about it, questions that haven't been answered and cannot be answered. And I won't go into details about that. But when Malcolm left the nation, one of the major stories that stands out about his life is how he took on a different perspective, how he embraced Islam as it's recognized and practiced around the world. The idea that Mankind is one, that we are all members of the human family, that all of us are human beings and we're judged not by the color of our skin or anything like that. We're ultimately judged by our piety, our righteousness, and our God consciousness. And his talk about that experience in Mecca and just other things about Islam really inspired me to eventually learn about Islam and later accept Islam as my faith. And there are so many reasons why I embraced Islam, but I won't go into that. But that brother, you know, his example planted a seed in my mind that would later sprout into my new faith of Islam. So this brother has had a major influence on my life. He is one of the greatest leaders, greatest speakers that we have had, period. Not simply for the things that he did in his lifetime, you know, his organizing, his building a black nationalist organization, a nation of Islam, and later going on to build another one, the uh, organization of Afro-American unity and also establishing a new um, Muslim mosque called uh, Muslim Mosque Incorporated. Those are major accomplishments that he achieved within his life. 
He challenged the status quo in his speeches and in his actions. And after he passed away, his teachings lived on. He inspired generations after him. He inspired people like Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale. He inspired people like that to create black organizations like the Black Panther Party. He inspired a whole generation, people like Stokely Carmichael at the time, who went later became Kwame Touré, a leader in SNCC who went on to build the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Malcolm taught us about pride and self-respect in a tradition of Marcus Garvey and Elijah Muhammad. He taught us to love ourselves. He taught us who taught us to hate ourselves. He taught us about that. He taught us to love who we are, to love our skin, to love our lips, to love our nose, to love our hair, to love our Africanness, our history, and our people. See, others, while they were pushing for civil rights, they didn't teach us to have our own self-respect and to to uplift our, our pride. We need to pick up where that brother left off. He was a true leader, a man of his word, a man who was genuinely committed to the people. Unlike a lot of these people that you see here on YouTube or elsewhere, who are simply hustling people out of money. They aren't building any organizations. They are not mobilizing any effort to fight against oppression in this country. All they're merely doing is entertaining people and selling merchandise. We need better than that. We need people who are genuinely committed to our struggle like the brother Malcolm X. So with that, I'll just say, Malcolm X, may you rest in peace. And I pray that God forgives you for your sins and blesses you with paradise. Peace.